put Morgan on the phone with his contacts uh, from Tregilio and whoever else was behind it. And they came up with the fake war and they started launching fake uh, firefights on the different beaches. And he said, oh, it's going great. It's going great. And what ended up happening is Castro and, and, and everyone, they ended up catching the people that were trying to uh, take part in that. The the other guerrillas, the other uh, war fighters who were, who were looking to overthrow Castro at that time. They captured him and did what they did, probably killed them all. And uh, so after that, uh, the news media came in and they talked to Morgan and he, he was, you know, kind of happy about how he got one over on uh, Tregilio and the Americans. And so at that time, J. Edgar Hoover, who was helping Tregilio behind the scenes, uh, revoked or went in and talked to a couple different congressmen and whatnot. And they revoked Morgan's American citizenship. So now he was stuck living in Cuba. Uh, and, uh, which I think he kind of wanted to, he ended up having a frog farm. Yeah. I said that right. A frog farm farm and he was he went away from the military life and he was just raising frogs uh, for a little while and uh then he started to see castro get involved with the russians because castro could have gotten involved with americans and maybe wanted to but there were certain things that that led to that split of the castro and the american split i I believe the tragilio take uh, uh fake war was won and uh so castro ended up signing a uh trade deal with russia and later on that would lead to a lot of the stuff that we see during jfk's presidency uh and further on down that line so castro was uh, in line with Russia and started to uh, turn communist. And this was okay with uh, Che Guevara and all the other leaders of the revolution, except William Morgan. He was not cool with the Russia-Cuba alliance. He was not cool with it at all. So he got with his old friends, the and, and he started running guns to the anti-Castro guerrillas. And, uh, you know, around this time, 1960, uh, the, the, his group, uh, reformed and they set up shop in, uh, uh, the United States. And they also later, uh, uh, later in 1963, they would set up a, a chapter in New Orleans. And that's where, uh, they would have contact with who other than. Lee Harvey Oswald. Interesting. Anyway, so uh, Morgan was angry that uh, Castro had had aligned himself with the socialists and he was not a capitalist. He, he, you know, he felt betrayed. So he started running guns through eh, possibly the CIA and uh, possibly the Americans to the guerrillas to overthrow Castro at this point. What he didn't know, you know, Morgan left and went back to the Escombrai Mountains and they were having different battles and they weren't really uh, effective. Uh, There may be a couple here and there, but what William Morgan did not know is that he had two men in his security detail that were informants for Castro. So that was his downfall. Castro found out about Morgan, found out that Morgan was running this, uh, running the guns, found out that Morgan was angry. They ended up catching Morgan. They put him in prison. He sat in prison. He was able to write his mother. He wrote his mother, you know, I thought I was doing the right thing. Obviously, I wasn't quite uh, uh, sure of Castro's intentions. And now here I sit in prison. I believe that I did this for a reason. And uh, here uh, I'm going to die. So when the age of 32, William Morgan was executed in Cuba because he was considered a spy. And uh, that was uh, the end of William Morgan. 
And that was his life. Um, in Cuba and during the time of the revolution, he met a woman named Olga Rodriguez. And they married. And they fell in love during this revolution. Um, so she ended up fleeing Cuba. And she ended up going to the United States. And uh, for years she worked uh, with different congressmen and whatnot. So uh, after a few few years, uh, April of 2007, she ended up uh, being able to help restore Morgan's U.S. citizenship. So when it was all said and done, Morgan uh, became uh, a folk hero in Cuba. Um, and not many people know of the story of William Morgan. If you are interested in learning more about this, there's a, a video. I think you can find it on Netflix or YouTube. It's called, uh, it was done by PBS. It's called the, it's a documentary. It was called the American Commandante. Um, a lot of good information on that. A great documentary done by American experience. It's a show on PBS. Uh, there's a, ton of uh, material online that you can look up and if you want to learn more if you enjoyed this story thank you for listening i i thought this story was wild i never heard of william morgan until recently and uh, i wanted to learn more and i wanted other people to hear that story there it was short and sweet we ran about 20 minutes or so uh, but I wanted to have that podcast. I wanted to tell that story. And if you were inspired or admired by that story, please share it with a friend. We're on Facebook at Inspired and Admired. Please join us next week for another episode of Inspired and Admired. We're going to get some more interviews here and talk to some different people. But in the meantime, we're going to tell some stories too from time to time. I appreciate you guys listening. Follow Inspired and Admired on Facebook at Inspired and Admired Podcast. Um, if you are interested and you're listening in Huber Heights, uh, I have a podcast that will be starting up real soon called Truman's Town Hall. So we're going to take that Huber Heights series and move it to Truman's Town Hall and continue that discussion. Uh, 11... 7 2017 we'll do a live podcast for election night so you guys can check that out there thank you once again i'll see you next week